In this tutorial, I'll talk about using the animation creator to customize objects like the robot. We'll change the shape of the robot so that it looks like ABB's IRB120 robot. ABB's website includes many CAD formats for their different robot types, including the VRML format which we're going to use. I've downloaded VRML files for the IRB120 from ABB's website, and I'm going to prepare those files for use in FlexSim. I'm going to use AC3D in preparing the files. I recommend AC3D as a pretty affordable and easy to use 3D design package. One thing you'll need to know about AC3D is that their axes are a little different than FlexSim's. AC3D's Y axis maps to FlexSim's Z axis, and AC3D's Z axis maps to FlexSim's Y axis. However, AC3D's front, left, and top views correspond properly with the animation creator's front, left, and top views. So in preparing the 3D files, just make sure that AC3D's front, left, and top view matches with what you want it to look like in the animation creator's front, left, and top views respectively. So I'm going to go into AC3D and import the VRML file that I've downloaded from ABB's website. Next, I want to orient this so that the top view in AC3D matches the top view in FlexSim. If I go to the picture of the IRB120, note that the shape we imported is the base portion of the IRB120. To orient it properly, I first rotate the object 90 degrees around the x-axis, then I rotate it 90 degrees around the y-axis, then I export it to 3DS. I like to use the 3DS format because FlexSim will properly scale 3DS objects when they're imported into FlexSim. The process is essentially the same for all of the other VRML files, so I'll go ahead and make those changes to the other robot joints and then come back in FlexSim. From FlexSim now, we import those 3DS shapes into each of the robot joints. I select the base joint, I browse for the shape, and choose the base joint 3DS file, and I repeat this step for each of the joints. Once I've imported these shapes, I need to do two things for each of the joints. First, I need to position them properly, and second, I need to specify the correct rotation point for each of the joints. So for each joint, I move it to the correct position, and then make sure it rotates around the right axis point. Note that as you're doing this, you can show or hide different joints by clicking on the visibility indicators in the top panel. Once we've specified positions and joint rotations, we can now close the animation creator and the robot should work properly as an IRB120.